Good afternoon, and welcome to this special concert in honor and memory of our dear friend, Bob Jacoby. It's wonderful to see so many of you here, and I know lots of you are at home on your computers or at telephones, too, so welcome. Bob Jacoby was one of the smartest and talented persons that I have ever known. He could have had a career in many professions, but he chose medicine and was a kind, caring doctor for many years. However, he always fulfilled his passion for the organ daily also. <laughs> he served as assistant organist here at First Presbyterian Church for 45 years and played many services, choir accompaniments, and recitals. When I was the organist here, I had generous vacation, but he would encourage me to take even more Sundays off so he could play. <laughs> and when we traveled together, Mark Pudwell came and played for us, and now he's the official assistant organist here. But the concert today is sponsored by the Topeka chapter of the American Guild of Organists, which I'll now call AGO, to make it short. Bob was an active member of our organization and always willing to play concerts, appear in our annual member recitals, or have fun at our parties. I am Norma Pettyjohn, as it says in the program, retired organist with the honor title of Organist Emeritus from First Presbyterian Church. And I'm currently serving as the co-dean of the Topeka chapter with Nick Good, who will play for you today, and that's why I get to talk. When the executive committee of the AGO met in July 2020, after Bob's untimely death, we were doing future programming planning, and it was decided immediately that we wanted our next member recital to honor Bob. Well, due to COVID, we had to wait over a year for this event to occur, but we're happy to finally get to hold this event here at Bob's church of the organ that he loved. Since I have known Bob longer than anybody in the AGO chapter, having known Bob since I was a teenager and he was in grade school, I get to be the MC today. Our fathers worked together at Security Benefit and our families were great friends. I'm happy to share some information about our performers and their repertoire while each is getting on the bench, arranging their music on the music rack and selecting their chosen registrations. Bob Jacoby studied organ since 1960 with Richard Gayhart, organist at First Press for over 50 years. Richard was very instrumental in getting the Topeka chapter of the AGO started in the mid-1950s and he made sure that Bob and I joined as teenagers. I'm actually the only surviving charter member of the Topeka AGO. AGO is a national organization founded in 1896 in New York City, which has chapters throughout the country. Bob was an active member and took his turn as dean of our chapter in 1977 to 78. Another interesting thing about Bob and his AGO participation concerns his life while a student at Johns Hopkins. He held a church job while there and even competed and won the Baltimore competition to represent that chapter in the regional AGO competition. Unfortunately, he didn't win that one. Bob also holds the service playing certificate from National AGO. Well, that's enough about the AGO. Now you came to hear the music, not to hear me talk. The first musical selection will be a duet of Bob and myself playing the Stars and Stripes Forever from a CD that Bob made from the many times we played it on this organ. We played the piece often as a postlude the Sunday nearest July 4th if both of us were in town. And of course, folks would gather around the organ to watch us having fun, getting in each other's way at the keyboard, often getting our hands on top of each other and telling one another to move over. I need those notes, you need to get out of the way. So our Saturday afternoons were lots of fun. So anyway, Will, would you play the CD, please?
fun, wasn't it? You know, Bob recorded every single service at this church for all those many years, and he loved to make CDs. When Bob and Anita and I would be in Estes Park watching a movie or something, he would always have on his earphones and his computer and all this stuff in his lap, and he would be editing and making CDs. That's actually a CD he made for my children as a Christmas present once, so, you know, I have many great memories. So, we're very blessed at First Presbyterian to have a composer in our midst and a very active church member and choir member, Gordon McQuair. He has written numerous works for choir, solo voice, organ, and other instruments. Gordon holds a graduate degree in composition and music theory from Iowa University and is a specialist in Russian music. He is professor of music emeritus at Washburn University, where he served for 11 years as dean of the College of Arts and Sciences. I think that's why we got him in Topeka, because he came as the dean. Gordon was very close to Bob Jacoby, and he has written this new work entitled Treading the Verge in response to the untimely death of Dr. Jacoby. He was teasing me one day and said, do you know why it's called that? And of course, I failed. Well, I'll tell you. The title comes from the hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah, written in 1745 in Welsh by preacher and poet William Williams. The first line of the third stanza reads, when I trudge the verge of Jordan, bid my anxious fears subside. The tune, Welsh tune is Cum Ronda, written by John Hughes in 1907. It's very familiar. This composition draws on the melodic line associated with these words and melodic fragments of the hymn tune gradually emerge over a Pasacalia form. If you want to look at the hymn, it's in your Glory to God pew hymnal on number 65. So the pro performer of this work will be Cynthia Newfeld Smith, although it looks like a trio, doesn't it? But it's really Cynthia. She is the organist here at First Presbyterian since June of 2020. Cynthia has a bachelor's degree from Bufton College, a master's in music theory from Bowling Green State University, a master of divinity from the Mennonite Biblical Seminary, and a DMA in church music from KU. She served as co-pastor of the Southern Hills Mennonite Church here in Topeka for 30 years, and for part of that time, she accompanied the choirs at Washburn under Kevin Kellum's direction and taught organ.
Thank you. Our next organist to play for you is Jerry Anderson. Jerry has a Bachelor of Business Administration degree from Washburn. He's organist at First Lutheran Church in Topeka, where I believe he's served for over 52 years now. He recently retired from serving as a banker for 50 years. He was executive vice president of Core First Bank and Trust, where he started working as a college student. <laughs> when in our music, God is glorified, is a favorite of all of us musicians, as the text expresses the real reason that we're church musicians. So look at the text in the Glory to God hymnal. It's number 641, if I looked it up right. That famous organist J.S. Bach signed all of his compositions, Soli Deo Gloria, Glory to God Alone. Jerry's playing a composition written by an English composer, organist, and music director, television and radio commentator and arranger, Paul Leddington Wright. Mr. Wright has worked as a professional theater music director and conducted over 30, 300 programs in the BBC series Songs of Praise, while also serving as organist and director of music at Coventry Cathedral. A frequent visitor to the US, he's in demand as a recitalist, choral clinician, and conductor. Mr. Wright's composition uses the beautiful hymn tune Engelberg that was written by Charles Villiers Stanford. The text of this hymn was written by Methodist hymn writer Fred Pat Green. The hymn is a fine statement of the central place of music in worship. Green was one of the leading contemporary hymn writers of the English-speaking world.
I'd heard that, and we all need to buy that arrangement, Jerry. That was great. <laughs> Our next performer is Mary Ellen Sutton. Mary Ellen is the retired professor of organ, professor emerita at, or, of organ at Kansas State University, where she taught for 36 years, 1974 to 2010. She's presently the co-organist at First Congregational United Church of Christ in Manhattan. And previously, she was organist at First United Methodist in Manhattan for 35 years and two years at First Presbyterian. She's been very active in AGO chapters in Kansas City, Manhattan, as well as Topeka throughout her career. Her education began in a rural one-room country school and progressed through Butler, Missouri High School, Graceland University, University of Missouri at Kansas City, and KU, where she earned her Doctor of Musical Arts degree. She's also a great sports fan of KU, K-State, Chiefs, and Royals. She's playing for us today Bach's Passacaglia in C minor, one of the monuments of organ literature. It was a favorite of Bob Jacoby, myself, and Mary Ellen. I remember her playing it here in a concert some years ago, so I requested she play it today in honor of Bob, since he loved the piece and played it in recitals here also. It's not easy to play at our age, is it, Mary Ellen? But she's going to do it justice. <laughs> The piece uses triple meter, a minor key, and a ground bass that is the basis for the variations which follow. The eight measure long bass line borrows its first four measures from a passacaglia by a French composer, André Raison, also of the Baroque era. 20 variations using the bass line theme use a variety of rhythmic patterns, melodic motives, and texture from two to five voices. The 21st variation is a fugue using the four measure raison theme plus two other subjects. The three subjects appear together throughout the rest of the fugue. This composition probably comes from Bach's years at Weimar, 1707 to 1717. The work has become a model for studies in contrapuntal writing and variation techniques.
Yes, Bach really knew how to write for his chosen instrument, didn't he? It's a wonderful piece. It's hard to, another aside, I played that from memory on my graduate recital 60 years ago, and I probably couldn't play it today. But anyway, that's memories. <laughs> but now it's time for another duet. So Sharon and Joshua will play the short first movement and the only known movement from the concerto for two organists on one organ by Johann Ernst. Ernst lived a short life from 1696 to 1715. As a German prince, he commissioned scores of music, and some of the works that he wrote, including the piece performed today, were arranged for organ by J.S. Bach when he was the court organist at his time in Weimar. Sharon Hedinger is officially retired, but often on the bench for several different churches. She's a graduate of Westminster Choir College and holds a DMA from KU. She also rings and directs bell choirs and accompanies soloists, choristers, and instrumentalists. She loves to travel, and she's fun to travel with, too. I've had that experience at a Boston convention. <laughs> Joshua Hearn is music director at Southminster Presbyterian in Kansas City, began his music ministry 25 years ago in central Illinois. His Bachelor of Music degree is from the University of Illinois and his master's from KU. In addition to his church duties, he plays in the Lawrence Community Handbell Choir. He also loves to travel. A fun thing for me to do to add to Joshua's info is that he cleans up the kitchen and does the dishes at my home after the annual AGO Woo Woo party at my house every January. <laughs> Thank you, Joshua. We'll be having that again. <laughs>
That was a fun piece. Bach would have liked that, too. <laughs> well, Bob Jacoby loved to play the Mendelssohn organ sonata, so it's important to include one of those in today's program. Some of you may have been here way back in 1997 when our member recital was just all six of the Mendelssohn sonatas, and I think Bob played number one, I played number two, Mary Ellen played one, Nick Good played one, Cynthia played one, so, you know, we love to share our music. But Nicholas Good is going to play number three from Opus 65 that was written back in 1844. Unlike many sonatas, this one only has two movements, a con moto maestoso and an andante tranquillo. The first movement begins with a processional piece that Mendelssohn had started writing for the wedding of his sister Fanny. That is followed by a double fugue underscored with Luther's chorale tune, Out of the Deep Have I Called to You, in the pedal part. Then the processional music returns to conclude the first movement. The second movement is A Song Without Words, dated August 17th of 1844. Nicholas Good, a Topeka resident since 1985, has been playing organ since his first exposure to the instrument as an undergraduate at the University of Illinois. After retiring from a career as a CPA and software developer, he enrolled in the Graduate Organ and Church Music program at KU, where he recently received his master and DMA degrees in organ performance. In addition to his busy organist and choir duties at Christ Church in Overland Park, he's an active harpsichordist who performs many concerts annually. You probably picked up that a lot of these organists have played services this morning and commuted to play from, for you from Kansas City and Manhattan, as well as Topeka. <laughs> Mendelssohn.
Well, Bob Jacoby loved the music of Bach, so it is very appropriate that another Bach piece is on our program today. Lucas Tappan will play the Fantasia next. This piece is frequently called Pièce d'orgue, or simply organ piece. No autograph of this work survives, but it is known that an early version of this piece was copied by Johann Walther, another well-known organist of the Baroque period. This work is probably from Bach's Weimar period also, like so many of his other compositions. The composition is very dynamic and cheerful, showing a youthful vigor and digital dexterity. Our performer, Lucas Tappan, is very busy with his musical duties at Most Pure Heart of Mary and also teaching the many choristers and accompanying at Most Pure Heart of Mary School. Lucas, like Sharon, Mary Ellen, Nick, and Cynthia, also holds a DMA degree from KU. Now, when he walked in, he didn't have his organ shoes. He must have called his wife or borrowed some. We thought he was going to play in his sock feet, but here goes another Bach piece. <laughs>
It is soon time to conclude this concert before Bob's Vidor Toccata with a quiet, contemplative duet that Bob loved to play with Jane Anderson. They played a lot of duets and were even thinking of a duet recital but never got it scheduled. This even song uses two hymn tunes, the famous Talus Canon and the Welsh hymn that I cannot pronounce that is frequently sung to all through the night or God that made us earth and heaven. The Talus Canon tune is in our Glory to God Pew Hymnal on number 675. I couldn't find the Welsh one, but it's in lots of other hymnals. Jane Anderson has a long history with Bob Jacoby also. They were students together at Topeka West High School where they served as choir accompanists, of course. Then while students at KU, they commuted to Topeka on Thursday nights for choir practices at their two churches, Jane at Countryside Methodist and Bob at Central Presbyterian. I did the same Thursday travel plan while at KU with two other Topeka organists as we all held church jobs during college days. Bob and Jane loved to play duets together and always shared the bench on my home organ at the January woo-woo party. After many years of making music at First Baptist Church in Topeka, Jane moved back to her original home church of Countryside, I think about 14 years ago. She also was a student of Richard Gayhart, like Bob and myself. Dr. Mark Pudwell, Nebraska native, is director of music at Topeka Baptist, but finds time to leave his church duties there to be the official assistant organist now at First Presbyterian. While I was still the organist here at First Press, Bob and Anita and Mark and I would come to my house every January for pizza, and we would plan who would play every Sunday throughout the entire coming year. We were a great trio. <laughs> Mark took very early retirement from his duties as a medical pathologist to follow his passion for music, and you'll find him accompanying many musical events at Topeka, Civic Theater, and any choral concert that needs him. <laughs> After Jane and Mark play their very meditative, quiet selection, I will not talk anymore, as we went to move into hearing Bob Jacoby play the famous Toccata by Vidor. I played it many Easter Sundays for the postlude, and he turned the pages, and after my many joint replacements, it was Bob's turn to play the wonderful piece, and I could turn the pages. So you will hear it from this organ, and actually see the stops on the organ move, so we're not using a CD, it's coming out of the instrument with the record playback. Please stay and visit at the simple reception in Disciples Hall, out these doors, following the concert, and my thanks to Melanie McQueer for making the coffee and purchasing some cookies for you. And my many thanks to all of my colleagues who played so beautifully today and were so willing to participate. There were others that would have played too, but we tried not to make the concert too, too long. So I hope you enjoyed it. We all really have a good time together and love our church jobs.